Good afternoon. I am Toya Porter, and I am with the LDOE Child Nutrition Program. And in this presentation, we will discuss completing the verification summary form. This is part two of the two-part verification series. Please consider listening to part one first if you haven't already done so. Here are a list of abbreviations that we will be using throughout this presentation. NSLP for National School Lunch Program, SBP for School Breakfast Program, RCCIs for Residential Child Care Institutions, CEP for Community Eligibility Program, TANF for Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, FDPIR for Food Distribution Programs on Indian Reservations, SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, and DC for Direct Certification. At or near the beginning of the year, SFAs will collect student eligibility in two different ways, through direct certification matches and through household applications. Starting on October 1st, SFAs will need to count all of the applications certified at face value that did not match on direct certification. Use this total to calculate how many applications you will need to verify. You have until November 15th to complete verification activities. Applications that were submitted and found through direct certification are not eligible for verification. November 15th through January 10th is the timeline to report the results of verification on the verification summary form. All SFAs, regardless of their type, are required to report their results because it includes additional information used by USDA, such as enrollment, identified students, and the number of operating sites per SFA. The verification summary form, or the FNS 742, is the last step in the verification process. As stated on the previous slide, verification begins on October 1st and should be complete by November 15th. This last step can be completed as soon as verification activities are completed, but must be submitted to the state agency via the CMP website no later than January 10th. It is always a good idea to complete the verification summary form prior to the deadline so that the state agency has adequate time to review your information and make corrections as needed. Always contact the state agency if you have any questions about the verification process or the verification summary form. So how do you know when verification is considered complete? First, the household submits adequate written evidence that results in no change in status. At this point, verification is considered complete for this household. If the household submits adequate written evidence, which indicates that the children should receive either a greater or lesser level of benefits, in this situation, verification is considered complete for this household when the notice of adverse action is sent or the household is notified that its benefits will be increased or decreased. The household indicates verbally or in writing that it no longer wishes to receive free or reduced price benefits. In this instance, verification is considered complete when the notice of adverse action is sent. The application provided case numbers and it is determined that no household member is receiving benefits from an assistance program. In this scenario, verification is considered complete when the notice of adverse action is sent. Now that you have completed all verification activities, we will enter the data into the verification summary form. To access the form, you will log into the CMP website, click on the Green School Food Service tab in the upper right side of the screen. Next, look on the left-hand column and click Verification Summary. 
Under Verification Summary, you will click on View Form. The FNS 742 Verification Report has five separate sections, as well as a newly added Section M, and is completed in a three-step process. In Step 1, you will complete Sections 1 through 5 and Section M which is a newly added section that will capture the number of free and reduced directly certified Medicaid students. In step two, you will run validations, which will check your data for errors according to a USDA set of rules. And in step three, you will submit your data to the state agency. Please note that all SFAs participating in the National School Lunch Program and the School Breakfast Program, including residential childcare institutions, that did not conduct verification must complete specific sections of this report. Previously, RCCIs were exempt from this report. In addition, schools utilizing the Community Eligibility Provision, or CEP, must complete applicable portions of the form. First, we will discuss step one, which is data entry for sections one through five. Sections one through five are completed differently according to which type of SFA is reporting. We have broken down how to complete the verification summary form sections according to SFA type in the slides to follow. First, we will discuss traditional school systems. These are SFAs that utilize free and reduced price meal applications. Next, we will discuss system-wide system CEP systems then partial CEP systems, who are a mixture of CEP and non-CEP schools, followed by RCCIs without day students, and finally, RCCIs with day students. First, we will discuss completing the verification summary form as a traditional school system using free and reduced meal price applications. Here is a screenshot of section one. Traditional school districts will fill out both columns for 1-1, for which is the number of schools and the number of students. Both numbers are filled out as of October 31st of the current school year. The number of schools should match the number of schools on the claim file for the month of October, as well as the number of schools listed in the Schedule A. Since your October claim will report the largest number of students enrolled during the month of October, your enrollment as of October 31st should be at or slightly below that value. This is an, is an edit check of sorts that can help you ensure you are reporting accurate numbers. When you have filled out question 1-1, you will click the mark as completed button underneath the section. On this slide, you can see a screenshot of section two. Traditional school systems will mark this section as complete without making any changes since there are no CEP schools or other special provisions in place. After completing this section, you will click the mark as completed button underneath the section. On this slide, you will see a screenshot of section three. Please note that the numbers reported on this slide are also reported as of October 31st of the current school year. In 3-2, you will enter the number of students identified through direct certification or DC SNAP list as of October 31st. This will include any students who filed applications but were later found on DC SNAP list. You will not include applications with a SNAP number only who were not identified on a SNAP list. In 3-3, you will report students directly certified through other programs. Include those directly certified through temporary assistance for needy families or TANF, food distribution program on Indian reservations, FDPIR, or Medicaid, as well as those documented as homeless, migrant, runaway, foster, Head Start, or a non-applicant who was approved by local officials. Do not include SNAP students already reported in 3-2. Please note that many software programs reverse the information in 3-2 and 3-3. Generally, 3-2 
should be larger than 3-3. Also note that 3-4 is not applicable in the state of Louisiana. After completing this section, you will mark it as completed. After section three has been marked as completed, you will move to the newly added section M to report your students directly certified with Medicaid. This section is where DCM direct certification counts will be reported. On this slide, you will see a screenshot of section M In M-1, you will enter the number of students identified through direct certification with Medicaid for free meals in column A and students directly certified with Medicaid for reduced meals in column B. On this slide, you can see a screenshot of section four. In section four, you are reporting students approved as free or reduced price eligible through household applications. In 4-1, you will report applications approved as categorically free eligible. This is based on those providing documentation, for example, a case number for SNAP, TANF, FDPIR on an application. In 4-2, you will report applications approved as free eligible based on household size and income information. In 4-3, you will report applications approved as reduced price eligible based on household size and income information. Please note an important difference on this slide you are reporting the number of applications as of October 1st of the school year and the number of students associated with those applications as of October 31st. You will not be allowed to submit this section if the number of applications exceeds the number of students. Commonly, because of the difference in dates reported for applications and students, students will inevitably be found on the October SNAP list and therefore remove from this section of reporting and report them in the previous section. If this occurs, you will need to identify the applications associated with those children and remove them from your October 1st number of applications. After completing this section, you will mark as completed. At the bottom of section four, totals are auto-populated from section four into T-1 and T-2. You will not need to enter any numbers here. T-1 will auto-populate the total free eligible students reported in this section. T-2 will auto-populate the total re reduced price eligible students reported in this section. Next, you will complete section five, which is the results of the verification. Indicate on 5-2 when verification was complete. Please refer to slide five if there are questions about when verification was considered complete. Please note that you are reporting the date that verification activities were completed, not when this form was completed. As a reminder, the due date for verification activities is November 15th. Next, indicate on 5-3 which verification method was used, standard, alternate one, or alternate two. This will be based on your non-response rate from the previous school year. Please note that only schools with less than a 20% non-response rate in the previous year are eligible to use alternate methods. However, please report the actual method you used. Refer back to the verification part one presentation for a description of the methods. On 5-4, you will indicate how many total error-prone applications were on file as of October 1st. Error-prone applications are needed for standard or alternate two methods. This is the total number on file, not the total, total used for verification. Please note, it is a common error to report zero in this field. 
It is a good idea to tag all error-prone applications as you process them so they are easy to identify for the verification summary report and verification activities. Section 5-5 is automatically populated by the CNP website from information the SFA provided in Section 4, along with the verification method selected. The SFA should not exceed this number. As USDA wants SFAs to only verify the number of applications needed. Please note that if more than this number were verified, the remainder will need to be recorded under verified for cause. In fields 5-6 and 5-7, they are related to direct verification. Again, you can refer back to verification part one if you need further details about direct verification as it is different than direct certification. You are not required to conduct direct verification. If you do not, please check box 5-6 and move to the next section. It is not a finding if you check 5-6. However, if you do look up each child selected for verification in eScholar prior to sending out written notices to each household, then do not check box 5-6 and fill in 5-7. If you attempted direct verification, but did not identify any students, you may still report zero applications and zero students. When this occurs, the system will not allow you to submit your form until you leave a comment at the end of section five. Your comment could be something similar to SFA attempted direct verification. However, no students were identified. 5-6, and 5-7 are frequently filled out incorrectly. Please call the state agency if you have any questions about this portion of the form. Subsection 5-8 is your results of verification by original benefit type. Under benefit type A, free categorically eligible, you will report students and applications certified as free based on SNAP, TANF, FDPIR documentation, such as case number applications. Please note that if you use the standard method, you will likely not have anything to report in 5-8 free categorically eligible, as these would not be error-prone applications. You will report the results in this section. Did the household respond? with information provided resulting in no change to their status? Did the household respond, but the document, documentation provided resulted in a change to reduce price meals? Did the household respond with the documentation provided resulting in a change to paid status? Or did the household not respond, resulting in a status change to paid? Column B is where you will report applications originally determined to be free based on income information provided on the application. These applications were certified as free based on income household size applications. Again, you will report the results in this section. Did the household respond with documentation resulting in no change in status? Did the household respond with the documentation provided resulting in a status change to reduce price meals? Did the household respond with documentation provided resulting in a status change to paid? Or did the household not respond to the verification request resulting in a status change to paid? Column C is where you report reduced price income applications that were originally certified as reduced price based on income and household size based on the original information provided on the application. Again, you will report the results of verification based on the documentation provided or not provided by the household. Please note that you will not include applications or students that were directly verified and reported under 5-7.
Here you can see a screenshot of verification for calls in the comments section under 5-8. Verification for calls or VC1 is where you report any applications verified for calls. Additionally, if you verified more applications than indicated on 5-5, you should report that number here. If you attempted direct verification but did not identify any students, please enter your comment under the comments section. After completing all of section five, you will mark, you will click marked as completed. On this slide, you can see the formula section five is based on. The total number of applications verified, those selected for verification, plus those verified for cause, which are shown in purple, should be equal to the number of applications directly verified and those reported in 5-8, shown in orange. The arrows above show which spaces are added together. 5-5 plus VC-1 should equal 5-7 plus 5-8. Purple application fields should total orange application fields. On slide 53, we will pick back up on step two, which is validating your data. Next, we will discuss completing the verification summary form as a system-wide CEP. Completion of the form is very brief and should only take about five minutes. System-wide CEP districts will fill out question 1-1, the number of schools and the number of students as of October 31st of the school year, current school year. The number of schools should match the number of schools on the claim filed for the month of October, as well as the number of schools listed in the Schedule A. Since your October claim reports the largest number of students enrolled during the month of October, your enrollment as of October 31st should be at slightly below, be at or slightly below that value. This is an edit check of sorts that can help you ensure you are reporting accurate data. When you have filled out question 1-1, you will click mark as completed. In section two, you will report the number of schools and then number of students in your CEP schools. For a system-wide CEP, these numbers will exactly match the numbers entered in section one. When you have entered the data, click mark as completed. In section, section three, you will click box 3-1 and mark this section as completed. In sections M and section four, you have no information to report as a system-wide CEP. You will not make any changes, but you will need to open each section to mark as completed. In section five, you will check box 5-1 and mark this section as completed. And that's it. You can proceed to step two, which begins on slide, slide 53. Now we will discuss completing the verification summary form as a partial CEP system. Partial CEP systems will fill out questions 1-1, the number of schools and the number of students as of October 31st of the current school year. The number of schools should match the number of schools on the claim filed for the month of October as well as the number of schools listed in the Schedule A. Since your October claim will report the largest number of students enrolled during the month of October, your enrollment as of October 31st should be at or slightly below that value. This is, this is an edit check of sorts that can help you ensure you are reporting accurate numbers. When you have filled out question 1-1, you will click Mark as completed. In section two, you will report the number of CEP schools and the students associated with them under 2-3. This should match the number of CEP schools indicated in your CEP election form 
that was submitted earlier in the year. When you have completed this section, you can mark it as completed. The remaining sections three through five are filled out reflecting the non-CEP schools only who accept and process free and reduced price applications. The slides, this slide shows a screenshot of section three. Please note that the numbers reported on this slide are also reported as of October 31st of the current school year. In 3-2, you will enter the number of students identified through direct certification DC SNAP list as of October 31st for your non-CEP schools. This will include any students who filed applications but were later found on DC SNAP list. You will not include applications with a SNAP number only who were not identified on a SNAP list. In 3-3, you will report students directly certified through other programs at your non-CEP schools. Include those directly certified through TANF, FDPIR, or Medicaid, as well as those documented as homeless, migrant, runaway, foster, Head Start, or a non-applicant that was approved by local officials. Do not include SNAP students already reported in 3-2. Please note that many software programs reverse the information in 3-2 and 3-3. Generally, 3-2 should be larger than 3-3. Also note that 3-4 is not applicable in the state of Louisiana. After completing this section, you will mark as completed. After section three has been marked as completed, you will move again to the newly added section M to report your students directly certified with Medicaid. This section is where DC-M direct certification counts will be reported. On this slide, you will again see the screenshot of section M-1. You will enter the number of students identified through direct certification with Medicaid for free meals in column A and students directly certified with Medicaid for reduced meals in column B. On this slide, you can see a screenshot of section four. In section four, you are reporting students approved, approved as free or reduced price eligible through household applications. In 4-1, you will report applications approved as categorically free eligible. This is based on those providing documentation, for example, a case number for SNAP, TANF, FDPIR on an application. In 4-2, you will report applications approved as free eligible based on household size and income information. In 4-3, you will report applications approved as reduced price eligible based on household size and income information. Please note an important difference on this slide. You are reporting the number of applications as of October 1st of the school year and the number of students associated with those applications as of October 31st. You will not be allowed to submit this section if your number of applications exceeds the number of students. Commonly, because of the difference in dates reported for applications and students, students will inevitably be found on the October SNAP list and therefore removed from this section of reporting. If this occurs, you will need to identify the applications associated with those children and remove them from your October 1st number of applications. <coughs> Excuse me. After completing this section, you will mark as completed. Totals are auto-populated from section four into T-1 and T-2. You will not need to enter any numbers here. T-1 will auto-populate the total free eligible students reported in this section. T-2 will auto-populate the total reduced price eligible students reported in this section. Next, you will complete section five, which is the results of verification. Indicate on 5-2 when verification was complete. 
please refer to slide five if there are questions about when verification was technically considered complete. Please note that you are reporting the date that verification activities were completed, not when this form was completed. As a reminder, the due date for verification activities is November 15th. Next, indicate on 5-3 which verification method was used, standard, alternate one, or alternate two. This will be based on your non-response rate from the previous school year. Please note that only schools with less than a 20% non-response rate in the previous year are eligible to use alternate methods. However, please report the actual method you used. Refer back to the verification part one presentation for a description of those methods. On 5-4, you will indicate how many error, total error prone applications were on file as of October 1st. Error prone applications are needed for standard or alternate two methods. This is the total number on file, not the total used for verification. Please note, it is a common error to report zero in this field. It is a good idea to tag all error prone applications as you process them so they are easily identified for the verification summary report and verification activities. Section 5-5 is automatically populated by the CMP website from information the SFA provided in section four, along with the verification method selected. The SFA should not exceed this number as USDA wants SFAs to only verify the number of applications needed. Fields 5-6 and 5-7 are related to direct verification. Again, you can refer back to verification part one if you need further details about direct verification as it is different than direct certification. You are not required to conduct direct verification. If you do not, please check box 5-6 and move to the next section. It is not a finding if you check 5-6 However, if you do look up each child selected for verification in eScholar prior to sending out written notice to each household, then do not check box 5-6 and fill in 5-7. If you attempted direct verification but did not identify any students, you may still report zero applications and zero students. 5-6 and 5-7 are frequently filled out incorrectly. Please call the state agency if you have any questions about this portion of the form. Subsection 5-8 is your results of verification by original benefit type. Under benefit type A, free categorically eligible, you will report students and applications certified as free based on SNAP TANF FDPIR documentation, such as case number applications. Please note that if you use the standard method, you will likely not have anything to report in 5-8 free categorically eligible, as these would not be error prone applications. You will report the results in this section under the correct category. Did the household respond with information providing resulting in no change to their status? Did the household respond, but the documentation provided resulted in a change to reduce price meals? Did the household respond with the documentation provided resulting in a change to paid, paid status? Or did the household not respond resulting in a status change to paid? In column B is where you will report applications originally determined to be free based on income information provided on the application. These applications were certified as free based on income or household size. Again, you will report the, the results in this section. Column C is where you report reduced price income applications that were originally certified as reduced price based on income or household size. 
based on the original information provided on the application. Again, you will report the results of the verification based on the documentation provided or not provided by the, house, the household. Please note that you will not include applications or students that were directly verified and reported under 5-7. In this screenshot for verification for cause and the comments section found under 5-8, VC-1 is where you report any applications verified for cause. Additionally, if you verified more applications than indicated on 5-5, you should report that number here. After completing all of section five, you will mark as completed. On this slide, you will see the formula section five is based on the total number of applications verified, those selected for verification plus those verified for cause shown in purple, should be equal to the number of applications directly verified and those reported in 5-8 shown in orange. The arrows above show which spaces are added together. 5-5 plus VC-1 should equal 5-7 plus 5-8. Purple application fields should total orange application fields. On slide 53, we will pick, up, pick back up on step two, which is validating your data. Completing the verification summary form as an RCCI without day students. Residential child care institutions that do not have day students will fill out questions 1-2, the number of schools and the number of students as of October 31st of the current school year. The number of schools should match the number of schools on the claim file for the month of October, as well as the number of schools listed in the Schedule A. Since your October claim will report the largest number of students enrolled during the month of October, your enrollment as of October 31st should be at or slightly below that value. This is an edit check as well that can help you ensure you are reporting accurate data. RCCIs will also complete fields 1-2B, the number of institutions and students as of October 31st. For RCCIs without day students, the numbers entered in 1-2 and 1-2B will match. When you have filled out these fields, you will click marked as completed. In section two, RCCIs will mark this section as complete without making any changes since there are no CEP schools or other special provisions in place. In section three, you will click box 3-1 and mark this section as completed. Also, no information is required in section M and section four for an RCCI without day students. So you will mark these sections as completed. Again, no information is required in section five. Check box 5-1 and mark this section as completed. At this point, you have completed step one of the verification summary form and you should be moving on to step two, which we will discuss on slide 53. For RCCIs with and without day students, the SFA will report the number of RCCIs with and without day students and their associated students in section one. Section two will be left blank. Section three through five, including section M, will be filled out according to day students only. Please contact the state agency with specific questions. All SFAs will continue with step two. When all sections of step one are marked as completed, you may proceed to step two, the run of validations. In step two, you will click validate data to run USDA's validations. 
Their validations are a series of formulas with common errors USDA has identified to ensure your data is accurate. Please note that each section must say marked as completed in order to be able to proceed to the next step. If the validate data button is grayed out, you will need to go back to the section or sections that are not marked as completed. Clicking validate data will run your form through USDA's validations. If there are any errors, they will show up here. All errors must be corrected in their respective sections prior to submission. If you don't understand the error or errors that display, please contact the state agency who can help you resolve the error. Once all errors are corrected, you may proceed to step three, the submission of the verification summary. In step three, you click on Click for submission. Next, you will click on the checkbox circled in Aqua for the latest verification process, then click submit. After successful submission, you will be able to download or print a copy of your form to keep for your records. You will also be able to go back to print a copy at a later time by going to the verification going to verification on the right-hand side of the CMP website after logging in and going to view form. After submission, you may be contacted by the state agency if any revisions are required to your form. USDA's validations will not catch certain things that the state agency can, such as the number of schools listed, comparisons, with October claims enrolled and among, among other issues. As a reminder, the deadline for submission is January 10th, but please file as closely to the November 15th deadline as possible so that the state agency has time to contact you with any revisions that are needed. This concludes the verification summary form training. If you have any questions, please contact the state agency at 225-342-9661 or by email at childnutritionprograms at la.gov. Thank you.